question says, this is the exact wedding actually. Um, a geometric series has an even number of terms. The sum of the whole series is five times the sum of the terms in the odd places. Let me say that again. GP, even number of terms. The sum of the whole series is five times bigger than the sum of, if you just take the odd terms, the terms in the odd places. And I think they also tell you that the common ratio is not equal to one, okay? Um, which is important in a minute. Find the common ratio, that's the question, okay? Now, <laughs> what I like about this question is that if you, as you see when we unpack the answer, it takes all of the normal things that you know about geometric series. Uh, in fact, this is markedly easier than some of the application series and sequence questions. There is like just a, a tangled mess of lots and lots of lines. There's a very small number of lines for this, but there's logic that you need to apply to it that most people, because it's a non-routine wording of the question, they don't even know where to begin, okay? So here's where I'm going to start. There's a GP. <clears throat> it has an even number of terms. Every GP is in this form, right? A plus AR plus AR squared. I'm going to do another term just for the sake of it. What will my last term be? So my last term, the nth term, would be a r to the m minus 1. Okay? Now, for reasons that will become clear in a second, and you'll probably be asking, like, how did I know to, to write this? And the answer is, I didn't, but I've worked out after the next couple lines that I need it. I'm going to put the second last term in as well, which is 1n less, and then here comes the last one. Does that make sense? So there's my whole series. This could be any GP, right? I don't know anything special about this yet. That's the sum of the whole series. I'm going to call this sum of um, A for all terms. Okay. Now I want the terms in the odd places. That's the first, third, fifth, seventh, etc. all those places. So I'm going to call that the sum of the odd terms. Okay. Now you can see, and this is why I've written a few extra terms, I can pull out those odd terms quite easily. right? So for example, here's the first one. That's pretty easy. What's the next term I'm interested in this series? AR squared. Okay. Now my next one would be AR to the 4. I'm going to leave that one. Um, what's going to happen here? Which of these terms is the one that I want? Okay. Because one of them has to be odd. Which one? Now here's the thing. If I look oh, back to the question, the whole GP, this thing, has an even number of terms. So whatever that is, it's an even term. right? It might be the 20th term, or the 40th, or the 100th, but it's going to be even. That means this one has to be odd. Does that make sense? So um, the last term will be this guy. Okay. So plus, I should I should actually put AR four here, so I have a whole pattern. So this is what I've got. Okay. This is the sum of the um, odd terms. Okay. And here's what's really about this, right? The question simply tells me that this is five times bigger than this. Whoops. There we go. So in order to unpack this, I'm just going to say, well, hold on, the first term is any GP. It's any GP at all. And I know what the sum of a GP is. It is A times what? Now, I can, I can say this forwards or backwards. It, it doesn't really matter, right? But if I've got that on the numerator, then on the denominator I have. Okay. Now, that's equal to five times... Okay, here comes the thinking, right? Or well, it's the second piece of thinking. The first piece of thinking was recognizing that's the last term. The second piece of thinking is, what are all the pieces in this series? Well, and easily enough for me, the first term is still A. Okay. Then in here, I need to think about the ratio. I'll have a look. Yeah, you can see every time I'm going by an R squared because I'm skipping terms. Does that make sense? Right? So in here, instead of R, I write R squared. Okay, now pause for a second. If you see this immediately, don't shout it out. Let the rest of us think it through. How many terms will be in this series? Stop and think about it for a second. Okay. Have a look at the way I've written it. Have a look at the way I've written it. Right? Um, can you see? I might even. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. Can you see that when I formed this series, right? Every time I was missing a term, missing a term. Missing a term. Do you see that? Because there's an even number of terms, every odd term is matched up with an even term, right? If there was an odd number of terms, then I wouldn't know that. If there was like one, two, three, four, five, right? When I get these odd ones out, they don't all match up. Do you see that? But if there is an even number of terms, 
every odd term matches up with an even one. Do you agree with that? So that means because there's an even number of terms, there must be exactly half the number of terms as there were in my first thing. Okay? So if there were n terms last time, there's going to be n odd 2. Right? How many terms are in this series? Answer, there are n terms. Right? Don't forget, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> there's an r to the 0 there. Right? So if I count from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, n minus 1, but I forgot that one. So that's the nth term, right? So there are n terms here, there are n on two terms here. This part is still the same, okay? And then on the denominator, r squared minus, r squared minus 1. Okay, that was all the hard part. The rest of it's just some algebra, okay? Watch, watch as it delightfully unfolds. Uh, I'm going to leave this, whoops, I'm going to leave this the same because it'll all sort of collapse in a second. On the right hand side, I've got 5a. What happens to this guy? That's r to the n minus 1. Because look at the indices, they just multiply together. So this is r to the n minus 1. This denominator, I could leave it like that, but there's a nicer way I can write it that will make the next step easier. I'm going to take difference of squares, right? Now you have a look at this, okay? Have a look at all those terms on the left hand side. Every term on the left hand side is also on the right-hand side, right? So I can cancel a, I can cancel r to the n minus 1, and I can cancel r minus 1 because, because, why can I cancel it? Because r is not equal to 1, they told me that right at the beginning. I wasn't just random, so that I could do that line. So now what's left? On the left-hand side I have 1, on the right-hand side I have... And what I'm after is r, yeah? So r plus 1 is 5, so r is 4. Okay? Now, I've just gone through all this algebra. It's a weird way to phrase the question. So I'm not all that confident at the moment that I've nailed it. So you know what? I'm just going to test it out. It's not that hard. I don't need to know what the first term is. I don't need to know how many terms there are. That's interesting. This is completely independent of those. All you need is the common ratio. So I'm just going to pick uh, a first term. I'm just going to pick a number of terms just to see if this will work, right? Nice, easy first term. How about 1? Right? Um, if my common ratio is 4, then I'm going to get something like that. That'll do. That's an even number of terms. right? OK, what's this equal to? Um, this is 80, 85. and that's 5. Yep. OK, let's pick out the odd terms now. There they are. Yep. That's 17, which is 85 times a fifth, just like I was supposed to get. right? In fact, if you think about it, your intuition should tell you, oh, of course this should work, right? Because what happens when you add the next pair of terms? And when you add the next pair of terms, the next one will be 256 and uh, 1024. Do you agree with that? Now, when you think about this series down here, how it's growing, it's going to get that, right? Whatever the next term is, it's going to be four times bigger, right? So when you think of the big series, you're getting five of them. Right? So every time you add a pair of terms, you're adding this to the little series, and you're adding five of them to the big series, which is why this is the case. Okay? Do you also have to find the first term? Nope. No? Because I can change it. I can change it. Let's make this series 2 plus 8 plus 32 oh, okay. plus 128. The same thing, pattern I just noticed, oh. right? It will happen exactly the same because of this guy. This is oh. the guy that matters. Okay? Could even do it with fractions if I wanted to, but I don't. So there you go. I've contented myself that I've nailed it.